now God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. We make that statement every day. It is common. It's probably the most common statement that we can make within the church. For those of you who come to Mass every day, you hear it every day. For those of you who understand and listen every Sunday, you hear it every Sunday. We do it during the consecration. I will hold up the horse and says, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Using the words of John the Baptist himself as he proclaimed Jesus Christ. But we don't seem to really understand what we're saying. We seem to take it for granted. And we have become very common with it. We hear it every Sunday. We hear it every day. It becomes nonchalant as a nice word. It becomes flippant. We don't really grasp what is being said. And it's not that we don't. Most of the time is we don't want to. <laughs> That's usually why. Well, I'm going to say something to you today. I'm going to tell you a little bit about what that means. In those three areas. I want you to consider what being called the Lamb of God is. We look at the Lamb of God first of all, I suppose, from the point of view of chickens. Those of you who are farmers, and there's many of you around here, I don't know if you have sheep on your farm or land or not, but a lamb is something that is gentle, something that is very meek, trusting. Oh man, is the lamb trusting. You have a bottle of milk in your hand and you shake it and the lamb will run up to you. It doesn't matter where or what or what you've done to it before, once you have that bottle of milk, it will come to you. The ones that know it's going to get fed, it trusts you. But you're going to feed it with something that won't kill it. Without a problem. They're gentle. They're meek. They have to be protected at all times. The second part is a little different, of course. It's something about a new beginning. Behold the Lamb of God. It's a new beginning. John the Baptist understood that. When he saw Jesus Christ coming forth, he said, Behold, this is a new beginning. This is a new start for us. And here is the person who is going to launch us into that start. Of course, I don't know if many of you have been ever up north or I'm from Ireland, which you already know. And when I'm at home, I love this time of the year. This is the lambing season. It's a new beginning. The snowdrops are just pushing through the frosted ground. And the first newborn lambs come around this time of the year. It's a sign of spring, a sign of uplifting. A new beginning has begun. And the new life that comes forward, comes forward pretty quick. I don't know if any of you have ever lambed sheep. I have. A friend of mine had, I think it's around 300 or 400 yos that would lamb roughly around this time of the year. And I would have to help him. You could have 10, 15 yos lambing at the one time, so it's kind of quick, pretty quick when you're going around with lambs popping out right left and center. But it's a new beginning. It's something that it brings us to the idea of something that is new, something that begins again. And of course the third part 
It suggests redemption. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. It means, of course, that we are blessed because Christ has come to us. He is giving himself to us for the world, for the sins of the world. Not just one or two individual sins, but for the whole world in front of us. He has given us his grace. And he wants us to be part of it. He has given us that sense of who we are. John knew it. John was the one who prepared his way, in a sense. And of course, if we look at this particular gospel from John, you know, don't get me confused here. You're John the Baptist and you're John the writer. Or well, John the writer I'm talking about here. He is looking at his gospel from the very perspective of what he began in the prologue. The Word was God. The Word was in God. And the Word is God. That particular part of that particular gospel points to the rest of the gospel. Everything in that gospel points back to that particular moment in time. And of course that triggers right back to Genesis, the very beginning. Again, a beginning, something that is new. <coughs> and the people of Israel understood that. They understood what he meant when he said, the Lamb of God. It was something that was very well understood. Because he probably spoke at a man. It wasn't English like I'm speaking. Even though I heard someone saying it was. But he uses the word from the Aramaic. If I can pronounce it correctly, I can find it first. <coughs> Teya. There you go. But I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly, but Teya is what he would have used. Teya. There is the Lamb. That's what that means. Our servant. The Lamb was used either ways. It also fulfills that understanding of what it is from Scripture. The Passover meal. The huge event to which happened in Egypt. When they killed a lamb, an unblemished lamb, a lamb that had nothing wrong with it, a perfect lamb. And the blood of that lamb was spread across the door jam so that when the plague came that night, it passed over them. Redemption had been given. So they understood when he said, there is the Lamb. Behold, he takes away the sins of the world. And 2,000 years on, we use it constantly. But we have become familiarized. We don't really understand what has been offered to us. We sometimes wonder, or I sometimes wonder anyway, what people hear when I say that. Do they understand what has just happened at the consecration, at the Mass? Or do they just, as Michael J. Talbot said the other night, all are in a fog? <laughs> and don't even see beyond themselves. That's something we have to try to change. Regarding the understanding of who we are in relationship with Jesus Christ as partners within that particular perspective of the Holy Mass. The presence of God. That's something we're not very good at. 
we don't really realize that the presence of God is being made present for you in this Holy Mass. And every Mass that is being said throughout the world in every minute of the day. There is a Mass going on somewhere in this world every minute of the day. As Augustine tells us, he is present throughout the world. He is made present throughout the world. And behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. That happens every day, every minute, every place throughout the world. And we take it for granted. Sister Faustina tells us that in order for us to be in union with God, we must first understand Him. We must know what He is trying to tell us. And there in the Mass is what He's trying to tell us. I am here for you. I am giving myself to you so that you may have redemption. That's the thing. The three areas that we're talking about, gentleness is coming to forgiveness, the understanding of who and what forgives our sins. You have a new beginning each and every time that you receive the sacraments. It's a new beginning. It's something that begins anew within you. It's not something that you walk out the door and forget about it, which seems to happen in our world today. We walk outside the door, the minute we walk outside the door, we shake off Jesus and leave behind. You don't think. We're so busy sometimes that we actually leave before Mass is ended. We have so many things to do in this world, we just don't have time for Christ. That's the problem. And everybody looks at me, and I'm looking at down at you at this very moment, and I think I'm in a fog. Got to stop quickly. But that's true, isn't it? We are so caught up in the world around us that we don't have time. We don't give ourselves time. That's the problem. Of course, again. The word redemption comes to play. Final and the redemption, the redemption of the Eucharist. When we are receiving the Eucharist, we are receiving the redemption of Jesus Christ. He has shown us that he is the victor over death. I am the truth, the way and the light. That's what John the Baptist was talking about. That's what we do here at Mass every Sunday. That's what you're asked to believe in. That's what you're being asked to follow. And once you have that in your heart, once you grow that within here, then it should actually permeate throughout the whole day that you work with. It should permeate throughout the whole week that you're in. To learn to be able to be as gentle as a lamb, to be for as given as God himself, and to offer someone redemption, a new beginning in their lives. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.